Hey everyone, welcome back once again to Dad's Bedtime Stories. Don't forget to rate and share the podcast if you haven't already done so. Writing a review is awesome as well. And also don't forget that I do take suggestions for stories. So if you have an idea for a planet you'd like to see the characters visit next, or pretty much anything like that, just have your parents write to me at dad.bedtimestories at gmail.com. The link's in the description, so you can just look it up later. For this episode, my son Oliver really wanted us to go back to the candy planet. He just felt like we hadn't been there in a while, so I thought we better do that. This is episode 85, The Candy Planet Part 2. Now, if you didn't go to the first Candy Planet episode, really no need to worry about that. You can start right here. I think it'll all make sense. Just lay back in your bed, get as comfy as you can, and imagine yourself doing what the kid in the story does. You wake up in the cabin on the dinosaur planet. You get up and walk outside. You press the button on your watch that causes your spacesuit to fold out of your watch and around your entire body. It covers you with a high-tech armor, the kind that allows you to fly and do a bunch of other fun stuff. You think about flying and you begin to float up into the air. When you're high enough above the dinosaur planet, you look around and check on everything. And as you look, your stomach starts to grumble. You didn't have breakfast. Spaceship, I'm getting really hungry, you say. Understood. Would you like me to make you something? Asks the spaceship. Well, I don't feel like just anything, you say. I actually kind of feel like candy. Understood. Replicating candy, says Spaceship. No, 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 no. I don't want any replicated candy. I want the real candy. You know, the best candy I ever had was that candy on the candy planet. Do you not recall being attacked by a giant plaque monster when we were there? asks the spaceship. I vaguely remember that, but I'm sure we can find a part of the planet that doesn't have a plaque monster. Plus, I defeated it last time, I'm sure I can do it this time. Did we leave a portal on the planet, you ask? No, unfortunately, we did not do that, says spaceship. Well, then we better get flying there. You fly back down towards the ground and land beside the spaceship. You press the button on your watch once again, and your armor folds back into the watch. You climb aboard the ship and go to the command center. The doors behind you close. You look around the ship and you see the changers there with you as well. You take a hold of the steering wheel and press forward on the throttle. You steer the spaceship up towards the clouds, high above the dinosaur planet. As you rise up in the air, you watch as the ground gets further and further away, and then disappears behind the clouds. The planet begins to become smaller, and once you're far enough away, You tell Spaceship to jump to Super Hyperdrive and head straight for the Candy Planet. All of the stars around you suddenly turn to streaks of light as you begin to blast through some sort of hyperspace wormhole. You watch out the viewing screen for a while as the streaks of light pass by. But before long, You arrive at the candy planet and jump out of the wormhole. Suddenly everything's solid again. And you see the planet in front of you. As you approach the candy planet, 
you see that the planet is made up of a beautiful spectrum of colors. You bring the ship in closer and drop below the strangely colored clouds that almost look like cotton candy. As you get closer to the surface, you see that it's covered in sugary treats of every kind. Gummy bears, jelly beans, lollipops, and even chocolate bars. Spaceship, you say, roll down the windows. The windows in the ship slowly roll down on either side of you and you get a whiff of the air. It smells like caramel, peppermint, and chocolate. As you get down closer, you see what looks like a swirling, multicolored tapestry of some kind. It just feels so amazing. You see a place that looks like a great place to land. Spaceship, you say, scan the area for plaque monsters. Scanning for plaque monsters, says Spaceship. A light shines out from the ship at the planet below. No plaque monsters located in this area, says the ship. You bring the ship in for a landing in a large field. As you hit the ground, it almost feels like it rocks a little bit. You put your spacesuit on once again by pressing the button on your watch and allowing it to fold out around your body. Then you step out the back of the ship. As you walk out, you see candy canes growing from the ground like giant trees and huge gumdrops or something like it towering over you like a building. As you walk, the ground beneath your feet feels spongy, like you're walking on a giant marshmallow, but it also has sort of a crackling sound as you walk over top of it, like there's some type of hard candy below it. As you walk, you can hear the crunch of the candy. You press a button on your wrist that causes your spacesuit helmet to retract into the suit. That way you can smell the amazing air again. When you open your mouth a little bit, you feel what tastes like cotton candy against your tongue. The air itself is full of sugar or something. As you continue to walk, you continue to taste it. Ahead of you is a huge candy forest made of candy canes and gumdrops and other sorts of things. You make your way down a path at the center of the forest, and in the distance you see something golden. Spaceship, you say. What's that? Scanning, says the ship that's now shrunken down to the size of a toy and flying beside your head. It appears to be a golden caramel apple. The scan seems to indicate that it is the best tasting candy on this planet. The best tasting candy on the planet? Well, then I'm going to get it, you say. You begin to walk towards the giant golden caramel apple. You're not even really sure if you like caramel apples, but something about this one just makes you want to have it. As you approach, you walk into a clearing, and in the center of the clearing is the giant golden caramel apple. A ray of sunshine is peeking through the clouds, illuminating the apple and making it sparkle. When you smell the air, it's just the most wonderful chocolatey caramel smell you can think of. Oh. 
you walk towards the apple. But as you do, you hear something stirring in the bushes. Suddenly, a whole bunch of candy canes jump out of the woods. Except these candy canes seem to have arms and legs and peppermint swords? They all take fighting stances that tell you these things know some sort of martial arts. You quickly press the button on your wrist, causing your helmet to fold back around your head. And then you take the best fighting stance you can think of. The candy canes begin to do front flips and back flips from side to side as they slowly surround you. Uh... Spaceship, any ideas on fighting giant kung fu candy canes? You ask. I do have one idea, says Spaceship. Your suit has a autopilot mode. I can program it with the most relevant martial arts moves. Do it, you say. Switching to autopilot says the spaceship. Suddenly, the suit moves around you and snaps into a perfect fighting stance. The first candy cane does a flip towards you, and you easily step to the side, or your suit does anyways with you inside it, and jump out of the way of the sword. Another one tries to attack you, and once again, you easily sweep to the side. One by one, the candy canes come in, and one by one, you easily roll out of the way. Do a backflip away from one of them, or even jump down on the ground, twirl around, and trip one of them onto the ground. This is amazing, spaceship, but... I think we're going to have to fight back at some point. Can you, like, disarm them or something? Good idea, says Spaceship. As the next candy cane comes in with his peppermint sword swinging down towards you, the spacesuit automatically has you jump over to the side and spin your leg up behind you, hitting the candy cane right in the hand and knocking the sword up into the air. You spin around and grab the sword with your other hand. Then, as the next Kung Fu candy cane jumps in, he swings at you with his sword from the side. You block it with the peppermint sword you just caught. Then, with your other hand, you grab onto the sword and twist it backwards until it pops out of the candy cane's hand. Now armed with two peppermint swords, you take a different fighting stance. Two more candy canes slowly approach you very carefully. Then they attack at the same time, one from the left and one from the right. The suit automatically swings towards the candy cane on the left breaking its peppermint sword in two. Then, you turn around and throw your peppermint sword at the other one. It hits the candy cane right in the hand, and his sword pops out too. You do a backflip, landing perfectly on one of the swords, breaking it in two, and you pick up the other one. One by one, the candy canes come in, and one by one, you disarm them. After a while, all of the candy canes are standing there with no swords. They then get down on their knees and bow towards you. Uh, it's okay, you say. There's really no need to bow. It wasn't really me anyways. It was just the suit. The candy canes then get up, back towards the forest, and each of them do a backflip up into a tree and then scurry away. What was that, you say? 
I don't know, says the spaceship. It appeared to be some kind of test. You walk back up to the golden apple. It's about the size of your body. You press the button on your suit and retract your helmet back into it once more. Uh, is this thing safe? You ask Spaceship. Yes, says Spaceship. Scans show that it will be incredibly tasty, but fully compatible with human physiology. Okay, you say. Here it goes. You take a big bite of the apple, but it doesn't really taste much like an apple at all. It is, however, the most delicious thing you've ever tasted. You savor every moment of it. And as you eat, you realize that this was in fact the right decision. The candy planet needed to be revisited. Spaceship, you say, I think the candy planet's worthy of a portal. Understood, says Spaceship. Spaceship grows to full size, and the back hatch opens. Out of it come a number of robots carrying a huge portal. They install the portal on the ground and then fly back into the ship. Well, Spaceship, maybe we should head home. Understood, says Spaceship who slowly grows down to the size of a toy once again. Spaceship activates the portal, which starts glowing blue and looks like water. You and Spaceship jump through the portal once again, and you're immediately sucked into a wormhole, spinning left and right up and down, floating directly in the center of a multicolored tunnel. You pop out the other side, directly into the shed in front of your house. The portal powers down and you leave the shed. You go back into your house and look left and right to see if your parents are around. It's the middle of the night and you don't want them to catch you out of your bed. You sneak down the hallway and right to your room. You sneak inside and close the door as quietly as you can, making sure to turn the handle first, press it shut, and then release the handle. You crawl into your bed and turn off your light. You lay down on your mattress and your pillow, and you just notice anywhere you're holding tension in your body. You notice any tension in your shoulders and you let it go. Then your arms and you let it go. Any tension in your legs or your feet, your stomach or your chest, and last your head and your face just allowing your face to melt into a nice half smile as you allow yourself to drift off to sleep. Good night, everyone. <laughs>